Hey, how's it going, friends? Today's tutorial, I'm I'm doing a. It's pretty quick. It's going to be faster, much faster than last week's tutorial. It's high pass sharpening, and it's pretty much at this point the only way I will sharpen my images. Uh, it allows me to adjust where, because you're painting a mask, because you're painting in the sharpening only where it really needs it, and then everything else is preserved. Pretty much, there's no noise added to the bokeh or the blurry area of your photo. There's no noise added to anything, and it only sharpens, like if it were a portrait, it only sharpens your eyes and your hair, maybe clothing, just the spots that you really want. And the great thing about it is, you can create multiple instances of this, so you can vary the degree, the percentage of sharpening in the areas that you're sharpening the image. So it's a little, a little more involved than just cranking up the sharpen in Lightroom or any other editing platform, but it yields, to me, it yields the best results. Uh, you, just, you just can't get better results in my opinion. So here we go. Okay, the first thing you want to do is just duplicate your background or your photo. And then you come up here to the drop down filter, other, high pass. And I usually keep it, uh, depending on the resolution of your photo, you might find it's more visible uh, depending on the radius. I usually, uh, since most photos I do are around 30 megapixels, two pixels uh, really lets it show uh, and if you're looking at it small, you can still see a nice sharp image. But uh, next you wanna come down here and make a layer mask so you can invert it. But first, I wanna show you what it does. I go down here to the layer blending mode, linear light. And this is the, the blending mode I noticed makes the most impact. Uh, it starts out basically too much sharpening and then all you do is pull the opacity down to, to your taste pretty much. So I'm going to control I there, invert the, the effect here, and paint it in. So I'm going to get a white brush, and I want to do her hair. And I, I'm actually going to make a copy of this, so I can vary depending on where I'm sharpening. So this is going to be, let me click on that here quick. This is going to be hair, and this one's going to be eyes. And uh, with this type of sharpening, pretty much all types of sharpening, less is more in this situation. So I'm going to paint in the hair sharpening. I'm going to show my mask here and just get all the hair. I could get those flyaways, but that's uh, for another tutorial here. And I'm even going to get this little strand here, but I'm just going to loosely trace that, get a smaller brush. Okay. Now, here's the, bit, here's the before of the hair. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can actually see it on YouTube. This is before, and as you can see, it's already a pretty sharp image. And then here's after. And I feel like that's too much, so I'm gonna bring it all the way down and bring it up to 26, seems okay. And since we're zoomed in, I'm going to enable this version of it and get her eyes, mainly her eyelashes, and her eye right here. I'm not going to worry about this one. It's out of focus. So, And here's, I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Here's a before of her eye. Here's the after. And seeing before and after lets me know how far down I should probably pull that. And I have it about 40%. So I zoom back out. And there you go. Nice sharpening. It's not um, making noise in any of the background. It's very selective. And uh, if, I, if I could go back in and maybe just do this, uh, this hair tie thingy, I'm not sure what it's called, uh, I would probably do that too. Uh, but with a lot lighter version of it. So moving on. We're going to do this from the last tutorial. 
Again, I feel like this is this the sharpness of this image is okay to begin with. Uh, so this is just kind of for example. Do the same thing, high pass, two pixels, linear light, and you can see that looks, that's a little too sharp, but if you can see back here on the leaves, before, after, and it's it's bringing a little too many too much highlights out here. So you just pull it out. I bring it back in ever so slightly, and I actually think 20% should be good there. And you can see what we're working with. And you can see the edges of the concrete barrier here just really start to pop out, and it's just a tiny bit of sharpening. So here's the big picture. You don't really see a whole lot that's going on. Like I said, this is very subtle. But for this photo, I didn't make a mask because I pretty much want all of the photo be to be sharpened. Uh, maybe you could make a mask and just take out the shadow areas where it wouldn't really sharpen. It would just create noise. And we'll move on to this one. Duplicate it. If I can get my taskbar out of the way there. Filter, other, high pass. Like I said, I'm, I almost always use two pixels. So I'll put that on linear. And here's the before and after. I'll zoom in on her face here. And you can see that's on right now. It's a little too sharp. But here's the before. Uh, her hair should be much sharper than that. It's kind of soft. And there we go. And I'll just pull it out. So I think it looks all right. 41%. And you notice a, a kind of a trend. I, I normally don't use it at higher than 20 to 40%. And that's really all you need. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to invert it uh, because it was creating noise in the background. And then I would just take my white brush and bring in just where I need it. I'm just going to go kind of big brush strokes over the whole thing. And then the only part where I would really take it out would be right here. Gets a little noisy. And there you go. So that's the way I always sharpen. Uh, when I'm in Lightroom or any other application, I usually leave the sharpening controls alone and then bring it into Photoshop and do my sharpening there. I usually get a lot better results that way. Uh, that way I'm not double sharpening and I'm not sharpening the entire photo. I'm just sharpening what needs to be sharpened. And if you like bokeh like I like bokeh, you never want to add noise or grit to your bokeh. It just doesn't look right. So yeah, all these blurry areas remain blurry, remain clean no noise, and then the sharpness is only applied right here. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's, it's a quick one, uh, it's a, and it's an easy thing to learn, an easy thing to do, and once you get the hang of it, you'll, you'll start realizing what images it would best suit, and, and what parts and what percentages, and how many pixels uh, for the radius and all that, and, and it'll just be ingrained in you, and you'll automatically get a feel for how much of it you need per photo before you even start. As usual, please subscribe and tell your friends. And remember, create, share, repeat, and keep it awesome. I'll see you next time.